Good morning. We're here on uh, North Lincoln in Marion just to tell a bit of the story of, uh, of Terry Holt. One of our Marionites has gone through an incredible challenge with uh, many, many days of hospitalization. And we're here just to share Terry's story with all of you and give you a feel for what he's experienced uh, both physically and spiritually as he's traveled this journey. Good evening. My name is Terry Holt. And I'm here to tell you a story about my long illness that I've experienced recently. But first, I want to thank all of you sincerely for being here tonight. And thank you for the love and caring that's been shown to my, to my family and myself. It's been overwhelming and uh, we can't thank you enough. To begin with, my story starts on the 14th of June. On the 14th of June, it, it was an ordinary day. I uh, was getting prepared for my first photo show down at Gallery 101 in Jan Davis's place. And so I was very excited about that and, and my whole day was, was about that. But that night, I woke up in the early hours of the 15th of June with intense abdominal pain. And from about that moment on, I don't remember anything for about nearly three months. So what I'm about to tell you is what I've been told happened. And, and if I make a mistake or something, my wife, Anne, or my dear friend, Terry Bendeska will, will chime in. I was taken to St. Luke's emergency room by my wife Ann and uh, they, they treated me there for several hours and sent me on to Newton where I was placed in ICU for a period of time. Uh, along about the 19th? June 20th. June 20th. My, my abdomen had swollen to an extent that my diaphragm was no longer able to work and I was breathing very rapidly, very shallowly, and my heart st suddenly stopped beating. I had coded. The doctors there said a prayer and immediately began a bedside surgery in which they were able to release the pressure on my diaphragm and my heart and through CPR they were able to restart my heart and following that they decided to to send me on to St. Francis where I was then placed in ICU in St. Francis. The following day I coded once again, my heart had stopped and they again started my heart with CPR. What I have been suffering from, or had been suffering from, was acute case of pancreatitis with compartmentalism, which means my organs had swollen to an extent and that they were no longer functioning as they should and I was on death's door for a long period of time. I was placed on full life support and dialysis in order to keep myself, in order to keep me alive. Uh, at which time, you know, the serious nature of this, of this event became very apparent to many people and my friends and family and, and community. My, my dear wife, I'll let her uh, tell what happened next. Uh, essentially, she called a family meeting. And I wanted to talk directly with the doctor and better understand Terry's situation. The, uh, the family was all gathered there 
uh, my son, one son was there by phone, but my rest of my family, my children were all there, and the doctors gave their prognosis, which, which wasn't good. One of the things that came out in the discussion was that, was I brain dead? Did I have viable brain activity? And they did test that and did find that my, my brain had, had good brain activity and my family decided to ask the doctors to continue my treatment. Essentially then following that I was in a coma for about two months before I came to and began to learn in some detail about my, my elongated uh, illness. I was very foggy when I awoke and so some of the facts uh, somewhat distorted in my head yet. <laughs> um, I remember thinking how blessed I was to be back with my family. When I opened my eyes, I always saw family there, or friends, or someone to reassure me, and then to tell me that they loved me. And it was really a large part of their support that I, I gained the strength to, to continue to uh, go with my recovery. Today I am home in a hospital bed and I am given about oh four to six months, maybe more of recovery. So it will be a long time yet before you see me out on the sidewalks of Marion. Uh, I, and again, I appreciate all the, the love and support and caring. But one of the most important things I want to share is something that I learned about my life before the illness and now my, my life after my illness. Before my illness, I lived every day in what I would call just ordinary, going about my daily life. I put my personal relationship with Jesus kind of on hold. I thought, well, I could always you know, pick it up later and, and you know, get involved in my faith more later. But right now I was just busy doing everyday things and the other could come later. But I didn't know or realize just how tenuous life is. Life is extremely fleeting. Tomorrow could change your whole life as it did mine. What I'm wanting to express is that you may not have another day to begin a relationship with Jesus Christ. He redeemed our sins on the cross. Even though we are sinners, He still loves us. He still loves us in spite of some of the things, the, the things that we do. And he wants to have a personal relationship with you and me and everyone here. And so what I'm asking is to reconsider and, and think about your daily life. Is Jesus part of that daily life? Do you have that relationship? Don't wait to have an illness like mine to discover the need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Again, thank you so much for being here tonight for my family and, and your support. I look forward to seeing each of you at some time in the future and I thank you again. Have a great evening.